Hey guys, welcome back to the EA Sports FC 24 Wolfhampton career mode. We have a big, big money problem. What kind of problem you guys might be thinking is this. 112 million to spend, right? We pretty much signed six to seven players already. And at this point, we can use that money to pretty much transform the whole squad. I mean, there's still some businesses that I'm still looking to do um i think at the moment i pretty much nail every single part of it again i'm not i don't want to sign superstar i don't want to sign a you know 100 million worth you know player i don't want to do any of that sure i will put down the 50 million 60 million 60, 70 million player on the table right now but to be honest with the squad i have right now i'm quite satisfied as where we are right now so again there's still some unfinished businesses needs to be done for example um what's his name fabio silva again still looking for a suitable buy for him kundal we have received a few offers for him but again uh haven't heard anything much by the way i think at this point we have signed the majority of players that we wanted right again like the first choice you know the first choices of players that i have been scouting along Right now, it's all about scouting or it's trying to sign the, I would say, rotational players or just pretty much adding more depth. Again, I think left wing back is another area where I believe I need to sign another one. Uh, a world-class left wing back trying to become a, a great, great mentor to Hugo Breno. Center back, I feel like we need to sign one more. Again, when you take into consideration, we are only have four so i would prefer to sign one more player um especially in the middle part or right hand uh, right side a uh, right side of center back but again it really depends we just gotta wait and see right wing back i think it's pretty much all done and dusted at this point my control is gonna go very very low at one point so hear me out so chime is it cam cam campbell again this is a player where you know, should I keep him or should I not? Should I just loan him out? I think since he has great loan value, I would rather keep him, uh, loan him out again, hopefully raise his value a little bit, maybe sell him more for a profit. Kondo's pretty much going center midfielder area. This is where, again, another area I would like to adjust. Again, we sign a very uh, a future superstar, Jao Neves. And also he'll be partnering out with either Gomez or Lamina. Again, Lamina, his contract coming to an end very soon. Not looking to sell him at the moment. But again, if the right offer arrives, I might go ahead and sell him. And at one point, I might have to sign another, a couple of center midfielder at this point. Right midfielder or right winger, I think it's all stack. Fobbs and also Kansei Sal. Left winger, again, I'm, I, you know, I'm okay letting uh, Juan Hee Chan go. Uh, we have Sarabia, but he's retiring very early. 32-year-old. Mm, I don't know about that. Striker area, this is where it's going to be very interesting. Uh, well, Silva is definitely going, but if we receive a massive bid for Cunha from a much bigger club, then I'm sure I will definitely have to accept that bid. I think we're going to play three games today. I feel like there might be more into the summer transfer deadline day. Again, it's only about two weeks away from it, and I still feel like we have quite a lot of businesses to do but we got Chelsea in the first game of the new season and then Everton at home and also Liverpool away like I said Chelsea the first game it looks like they didn't really make a lot of signings I mean Kepa it's back I would say Pepe was there last time Cole Palmer again I, I don't see any improvement in this team but of course they do have Kamafinga on the bench but for us first game this is going to be a lineup uh, I would say this could be the default lineup. Depends on who we sign later on in this episode. We got Kofar in goal. Back five, we got Breno, Hincapia, uh, Dejalo, Arojo, and um, Castinia making his debut for the club. In the middle, we got Lamina and Naves. I think I'm very, very excited for this player right here. Up front, we got Gordon Cunha and also Conce Sal on the right. Lamina, I'll oh, get there. Brilliant. Cunha. Conce Sal, oh my god, he literally blasts this one over the bar. Maybe, arguably, Cunha should have probably taken the chance himself. Good tackle by 
Neves. Cunha. Oh, keep going, keep going. Gordon. To the middle. Finish it. Oh, my God. It was a little bit too soft there by Conte Sal. Back to the middle. Lamino with the finish. Oh, my God. Oh, my Lord. What a goal by Mario Lamina Jr. I believe that's his first name. That's his, I mean, full name. But what a goal. Should I even sell him at this point or offer him a contract? It's hard to say, but what a finish. Toe poked that one. The top left corner. And we scored the first goal in the brand new season. And at this point, I really don't know if I really want to let him go or no. I mean, if not, I might have to extend his contract. But again, in terms of the future, I really don't see him starting for, you know, starting the majority of the, the games here in this football team for, you know, for this season at least. Here comes Kopama in the box. The Hollow's done well. Chips it. To Gordon. He got a lot of room in front of him. Reese James is chasing back. And that is a red card worthy. What? How is that not a red card? I'm so sorry, Ref. How is that not a red card? You gotta look at this again. Reese James just. Yeah, that is a red card worthy. Oh my god. Not even a card. This is absolutely crazy. But we got ourselves a free kick. Not in a dangerous area. Gordon, Cunha, back to Gordon. We gotta find that second goal. But we gotta hold the ball up. Keep possession, but Gordon again. Oh my god. What a defensive play by Reese James. Who, in my opinion, should have been sent off? Lamina. Chao Neves. Oh my god. Imagine you score your first ever goal for your club. In a brand new country against Chelsea at the Stamford Bridge. That would be amazing if he scored. Last four minutes in the game. Chelsea keep passing around. They want to keep possession. They want to find that perfect timing. But Nkunku gave the ball away. But this is a perfect chance. Fops. Larson, please. Can you start making a run, please? Oh my god, okay, we have plenty of chances in that area, but we just couldn't find the back of the net. With 40 more seconds to go, Kamavinga just comes on for Chelsea, which I really don't understand that substitution. Because if he came in a little bit earlier, a guy with his quality, I'm sure that he would have helped Chelsea in a big, big way. But guess what? We kept a clean sheet on the first game. And also, it's a away win as well. Juan He Chen is heading out of the door to Crystal Palace. And I totally forgot how much that they have signed for. Kondo is gone. So two more players is gone right now out the door. Which might raise our budget to around 130. Yeah, it has to be. 130 million. This is going to be very, very interesting here. Really don't know what to do with oh Lamina again. I oh United, wow. Um, so we got another offer for Gomez in exchange for Clavit. Oh, I mean, again, I don't. I'm reluctant to let him go. The Hollow has a transfer offer again. We just signed him last season, so there's no point of letting him go. But are we letting? Okay, you know what? Let's see. Um, if United want, because the thing is, United do have Champions League football, so Lamina might want to play Champions League football this year. I'm have to negotiate for a higher price, maybe a little bit higher than 21.2 million, 23 million. I believe that is a fair valuation. Omar, okay, all right, Ten Hag, what are you playing? I know in real life you are winning the transfer window for sure for United. But this transfer window, I gotta take authority of it. 22 million and Ten Hag says yes to our captain. Can you imagine your captain scores the first goal and the winning goal against Chelsea for the new season? And right now he packed this back and say, no boss, I want to challenge myself. I want a new challenge at a different club who is playing in the Champions League. And Mario Lamina has gone out the door to Manchester United.
Let's revisit this again. We have 156 million and we sold a bunch of players. And recently we sold our left winger, uh, the South Korean Hwan Hee Chan, our captain Mario Lamina, which raised the money to 156. So uh, this is a very, very big, big problem here. Not, I, I, don't, I don't think it's a big problem because we do have a lot of money. But in terms of shoes to fill, left wing back, it's a, it's a must at this point, right? I can't carry on the whole season without a left wing back. One center back, it's a must. And right wing back is fine. Left wing, it's fine. I think we might have to sign a rotational player. Center midfielder is another area where I'm just kind of fearing for my life right now we got a bunch of left wingers i'm okay with it right winger is fine striker is fine as well so we gotta look at the transfer help i think this is the most most exciting thing um in terms of who i sign or who i really want to sign so i have to like do this first so the marco it's a player that you know really really good player but the thing is right i mean He's playing Champions League football. He wouldn't want to downgrade himself or switch himself to, you know, Premier League side. Definitely not. Not for Wolves. But if City offers money for DeMarco, then absolutely he would definitely go. But in terms of realism, in a way, uh, I don't think he would want to downgrade himself from Inter Milan to uh, to Wolves. So I can pretty much take him out the list here. In the center back area, I think there is probably a few players I'm eyeing for right now. I just I need to sign two of them at least. So based on based on everything here, right? I mean center back. Let's talk about center back. Um, you got uh, one of you guys uh, suggest this and Juste. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Um, again, I don't have the full report on him, but I'll wait and see. I think Wesley Fofana would be a very good deal for me. To be honest, he has been in Chelsea for two years. Hasn't grown a lot getting injured and not getting Champions League football, I think this might be a proper signing that I'm looking to sign. So let's see if we're able to strike a deal with Chelsea or not. Straight cash of 29.5 million and Pochettino is not wearing anything underneath him. Oh my God, they want Tati Gomez. That I... Oh, that's the thing. Like I don't want to let Tati Gomez go out. I let go of a lot of players already, and I'm not ready to let to you no know, to to let another uh, high figured or high senior figure in the squad to go. Thirty five million for Wesley Fofana, and they said yes to it. I love a naked uh, Pochettino, so let's hope that Fofana is going to say yes to his contract. Will he make a massive cut to his contract? Oh my God, he will. Oh, wow. Okay, I can't imagine. He's earning 92K in Chelsea already, and we just offer him 30% lower than he initially wanted. But hey, at least the deal is done. The second defender that I'm very interested in signing is actually Alfie Doughty. Again, he just got relegated to Luton Town. I'm sure he is good enough to, you know, to rotate with the squad in the Premier League. And I thought he might be a very good option for us. Very cheap as well. And I can definitely get him on uh, 2 million lower than his current valuation. 11 million for the English left wing back would be an absolute bargain. And Ed, is it Edwards? Rob Edwards have said yes to him. And right now it's all down to the contract. 40k a week and 500k signing bonus. They have to say yes. That's a reasonable offer. And there you go. Matt, not Matt Doughty. Uh, what's his name again? Doughty. Doughty, Doughty, Doughty. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Doughty is joining Wolves right now with 11 million. An absolute bargain for a player like him. And uh, he is our eighth signing of the season, I believe so. I want to sign a left footer center midfielder. Right now, we only have two center midfield left in the squad, and both of them are right footed. So it's time to cash in for Angelo Stilla from Germany, playing at Stuttgart right now. 23 year old, 80 rated. Does, he is not quite quick, but again, very good technical player. It looks like, you know, based on those stats, looks like a Granit Shaka to me. 34 million for Angelo Stilla might probably do. And there you go. Again, there's no tussle whatsoever. It's just you put in the catch. The other representative just literally says yes to everything. 60K a week and 750K. Oh, well, I think this will do. It's not make much of a difference, but 
ninth signing. Holy crap, we are the Knicks not in force because uh, Angelo Stilla has joined the club. I'm just going to quickly go over the newly signed players. So Fofana wearing number three. And we go down to the left wing back. Forgot about Dalti, 77 rated, 24 year old wearing number five. Actually, you know what? I would change him to a 45 because again, that that's his number in Luton Town. Uh, we're going to go down a little bit to still, I believe. So 23 year old, 80 rated, wearing number 18. And I think that is pretty much about it. Again, I'm not going to splash all the cash on one day. Again, we will leave some of it to the uh, to the deadline day. Next game, we got Everton at home. So, Kofar will be in goal. Breno on the left. Actually, Breno will be the captain. Or well, actually, Cunha could be the captain. Because technically, these two players are, you know, have, have been with the club for a long time. Uh, Hincapea. And then Dejalo, Fafana making his debut. Castinha in the middle. We got Stella making his debut. Naves partnering up with him up front. We got Gordon, Cunha, and also Fops coming back into the lineup. Corner. Coming in, Fafana wins it. Oh my god, that was on target. It was a good save by Jordan Pickford, and it denies the first goal for Fafana. But then the follow up header. Oh god, good tackle by the hollow. Last one minute here in the first half. Fobbs, heavy, heavy touch, but he still gets the ball. Drive into the middle. Oh, heavy touch again. Oh, my God. I feel like the majority of these players did not have a good preseason session in terms of their touches. That's a good ball to Beto. Back to McNeil. Oh, my God. Kovar come out. Oh, what a save. Holy, Fafana almost made a mistake at the back. It looks very easy. It looks really routine, but somehow we managed to get it away. But here comes Breno. We're on a break. Oh, no, he's not quite quick enough, isn't it? Back to Stila. And we gave the ball away again. Here comes Wendell. On the left. Good ball in, but heads it away. By Breno. Larson with the ball. Against Adrisa Ghana Gay. The 32-year-old veteran. Gordon. Oh, can he go around everybody? I don't think so, but... Castinha with the run. Oh my god, Larson, why aren't you making the run in the middle? Why can't you be a little bit more aggressive in the box? That's some good football that we're playing. Gordon. To Larson. You gotta be kidding me. Oh my god, your touch. It was literally perfect. Why would you take an extra touch there? That was the chance to win the game. Naves. Castinha run into the box. Oh my lord. This is how frustrating it is because nobody is actively making space in the box. And I think Larson kind of cost us this two points. But at least we're still unbeaten. We have yet to concede a goal in this early season. So, a fair interesting offer coming in. So, Campbell can potentially leave for $2.7 million, which is, I think, is a good valuation. But at the same time, you know what? If that's the case, if I can cash him in, I would definitely do so. But I'm not going to ask for a little bit much from fellow Real. But Vavio Silva might be on his way out, isn't it? How much is the offer? 13. You know what? I think that is a good enough offer from Brentford. And I can surely see him going to the other side uh, of England. I don't know how. I don't know the geography of England. But right now, Liverpool so far is one of the teams with two for two. And for us, we're sitting at eighth right now. Again, it doesn't quite matter. Liverpool, Man City. Look at Crystal Palace again. I mean, two for two very early in this season. But you would never know how they're going to finish. Uh, the season because last year they were very good in the first 10 games and then after that everything just kind of went down and for him uh, Fabio Silva it's gone right now 13 millions to Brentford apparently I can negotiate for higher price but Liverpool in this next game oh my god they have Jade is it called Jaden Dance playing up front is he even ready for the first team I don't know but they still have a very good squad but a little bit aging for us, the lineup is going to be slightly different today. 
Maga will be coming back into the starting lineup here. And I'm just figuring out who should I start. Gordon, I don't think he has particularly having a good game. I feel like he might be better off coming off the bench. I thought Stila and also Neves, both of them are amazing. And again, I got to figure out the, uh, you know, Braino as the captain. Back five, uh, Kofar and Go. Back five, we got Braino and Kapie. The Halo Fafana, Maga in the middle. We got Stila, Neves, and up front we got Bino getting starting or making his first ever start for the club. Cunha and also Conte Sal on the right. Oh my God! To get the ball away, Cunha. Go for it! Oh my God, Allison! What a save! And I think Van Dijk in that situation did very well because I thought he was coming out. Which delayed my shot a little bit, but the corner coming in, Fofana, Wesley Fofana, our new signing. I I don't think it's the latest signing, but he's our ninth signing. And guess what? He has scored on his second game for Wolverhampton. For Wolves, in short. But what a header as well. Conse Sal with the perfect delivery. And nobody was trying to contest with him. Luis Diaz was certainly off the mark. Van Dijk, I'm not sure what he was doing, but in that angle, in that area, from a center back per perspective, if he has the ball in with that much power, you don't expect your world-class goalkeeper could do a damn thing about it. The hollow. Oh, my God. Neves with the shot. Oh, my God. What a goal by the future superstar, Jao Neves. And we all know he has a very strong link to PSG right now, potentially going on for 75 or 80 million euro. But in this game, he has gone to Wolves, just uh, you know, not go to a bigger club. I mean, he doesn't want to go to the biggest club ever. He got to slowly step his way up. But what a freaking goal by the 19-year-old Portuguese player. And we're taking a 2-0 lead. Two, a tick, yeah, what I'm talking about. A 2 nothing lead against the league leader, Liverpool. Oh my god, he missed that. Dent with a brilliant chance for Liverpool to get one back right before halftime. And I believe he scuffed that as well. That's a good play. Right now we've got space. Stretch at the cross again. Maga to Conce Sal. Oh my god, in behind. Oh my lord, finish it. No, he hits the post. There's a bit of a confusion, miscommunication between Allison and the defender. We could have easily make it to 3 0. Oh, that's a good ball to the middle. Oh my lord. From a tight angle, Diogo Jota, the fellow Portuguese, has made the game even more interesting now. From a 2 0 deficit to 2 1. And they have 20 more minutes to at least salvage something out of this game. Ciao, Gomez. Neves. Oh, my lord. To the middle. Whips it in. Oh, my god. There you go. This is the winner. I don't know what I did with the controller. But Anthony Gordon coming off the bench. Same as Costinha. Both of them made impact coming off the bench. Holy cow. What a goal as well. Jao Gomez nushed off or winning the ball back. Neves finding Castinha. And he whips a good cross to the middle. And I'm sure this is definitely game over. Anthony Gordon with his first goal of the season. From that angle, Virgil Van Dyke could be the one to blame. Allison hardly believed that happened. What a tackle by Neves. What a player. Sending the ball forward. The game is definitely over. But can we make it four? I don't think so, but we play on. Gordon, turn. Ah, oh, never mind. Never mind. I think Larson kind of made it worse in a way, but there you go. Second win of the season against the league leader, Liverpool, and we beat them 3 1. And we're going to end the episode here with the three points. With 10 more hours to go, 79 million left in our budget. I think there is one area that I really do want to improve. It's probably center midfield, I think. I just can't emphasize that enough. We have listed a few players here. Curtis Jones, it's pretty much a player I would like to sign. But Fender Beek, it's another player that I would love to have him in the squad. 
Again, he's not going to start every game for us, but a good option. Again, I, I feel like, to be honest, his trajectory of his career kind of went downhill a little bit but i think it would be it would make sense for him to kind of leave manchester united plus right now he's not the main man anymore so i'm gonna go ahead and cash him in we can actually get him for a you know a million cheaper than his valuation 5.5 million for donny van der beek and of course ten Hag has to say yes i mean there's no way his career is completely ruined by Manchester United. Yes, he had picked up a few injury issues, but there is no way a player with his talent, you just kind of left him on the bench even though he is fit. Oh my god, he's on high wages as well. Rotational player, which is honestly, which is very good. This is what I want. A four-year deal. I don't know if I'm going to be here for four years. And oh, the wage, the wage. Oh my god, he's not going to play a lot, but at the same time, I don't want to give him too much money. Uh, I know I might overpay him a little bit, but I think this might be the right offer for him. He might say, okay, all right, I think I might overpay him. But at least we got another player in, uh, Van de Beek. Our 11th signing, of course, our first signing in the 10th hour, and we still have 10 more hours to go. I always like Curtis Jones, in my opinion. I, I think he is a, a very talented player. But the thing is, in real life, or pretty much in general, you just know he's not going to be up there as a starting center midfielder for Liverpool week in and week out. But if it comes to Wolves, he would definitely get more chances through that way. I know he has Champions League football. He has been with the club for a while. He has won the Premier League, Champions League maybe. I think he was still part of the squad, FA Cup, Cowboy Cup. I think he might want a new challenge. 37 million for a player like him is definitely a bargain. I'm just gonna put 1 million over the valuation, and Jurgen Klopp says yes to the deal. And Curtis Jones could be our 12th signing of the summer. I'm not sure he's gonna say yes to this offer because, again, it might be significantly lower than what he expected, but no, Curtis Jones is our 12th signing. Holy crap! We are literally not in Forest replica right now. I mean, this is exactly what we do with the money that we have, right? We have to sign players. We can't just leave it in the transfer budget and just let it go rot. You know, inflation and stuff like that's going to make, you know, whatever cash we have right now might not be, you know, sufficient for the future. Why not just spend that money right now and sign players to improve the squad? We are in Europa League. Definitely attract a lot of interest from other clubs. And of course, our club right now is very very young right now but curtis jones it's our latest addition last one hour of the transfer window so campbell has officially been sold to villarreal and stoke city wants to take on a brayu hmm you know what no not this window maybe the next window i will still want to use a brayu in some sort of form and right now for the last hour, I can say we have signed 12 players in total. And I don't know how many players have gone out the door. But it's time to pretty much go on the, whatever you call it, a uh, uh, rehab of what happened today. Recap of what happened today, not recap. Uh, but right here, Meyer again, a signing, blah, blah, blah. Left back, left wing back, Doughty coming on. Fafana joining, Hinkapia. Wow, I mean, we have some really, really good players here. Um, Curtis Jones, in terms of his number, I definitely don't want to cause a bit of a tussle between Gomez and uh, and Jones. So um, I think Gomez is still a really good player. I would still definitely use him for sure. But in terms of the number, I think this is going to be very, very interesting. Who was wearing number five? I think it was Dottie. I don't want him to wear number five. Is there a better number than that? I don't think so. Maybe number 11. I think it's number 11 for him, right? A center midfielder ne number 11 doesn't quite suit him. We have no number available for him. That's a problem. Maybe 27. Yeah, I'll give him a 27. Fender B can wear number 22. I think they look good in orange and black. Why not? But yeah, we have made a tons of signing already. I'm definitely loving the career mode so far. I think it's the fact that we got... Uh, a surplus amount of cash coming in, which make me needs to act to improve the squad. And in the next episode, I believe we will be starting our uh, Europa League campaign. 
it'll be a very interesting one with the squad that we have. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys in a bit.